Good morning, guys. We're going to have a look at the Oyster 565. Let's go and have a look, shall we? Being aft. Um, I'm going to go to the port side straight away. Both port and starboard, you have these really nice seats. So you can be part of the action, watching what's going on and relax or, you know, somewhere nice in the evening to have a sundowner. Two sets of cleats, both port and starboard aft, which is, I think, really important. And then you have a lazarette locker. This little section here, you guys all know, will be for your hydraulic backstays. And then you have your bathing platform just here. Three easy steps to get down onto it. It's all touch button control. We'll have a look at that in a second. And these, if you're wondering what these white blocks are, these will actually be for your davits. Centrally, you have this huge watertight locker. So holes for your emergency steering. Just over here, you can see the black round thing there. That's access to emergency steering and then just up here so if you need access very very cavernous storage area and um, access to services so being that the stern is completely sealed up you have one crash bulkhead there and then just here is your waltz tight um, bulkhead so nice and safe strong just down by my feet is your block and section for your main sheet so your main sheet's attached here goes to the block runs underneath there's another block there up and then to your main sheet winch here um, benefit of that is not what you'll see it but right above my head so directly above here is the end of the boom giving you good downforce on your boom it allows you to trim your sheets there's only one point for the main sheet so ease of handling you can be sat at the helm and do as you need and you'll see your electronics for the helm there for the main sheet and then your Selden hydraulic controls for your backstage your van and all that sort of stuff all right I'm gonna go forward quickly on our way, we're going to do the helms and that in a minute when we get into the cockpit. But while we're here, we'll point out the winches. You have a Lumar 54 self-tailing electric winch. And then just forward of that, you have a 68 self-tailing Lumar winch and your electronic controls just here. That's nice and handy. You know, you can reach it from the helm or if you're just relaxing in the cockpit, Push a button and away you go. I like the pop-up cleats that you get on the oysters. Very neat and tidy. And obviously while you're underway and sailing, it gives you a nice smooth surface so you're not going to catch any of your sheets or sails or, you know, feet along the way. As we're at an indoor boat show, you'll see along the deck either inboard or outboard there are rings, pulleys, and management system basically to keep this clear, to reduce any issues and give you a nice clear walkway all the way through. You will notice with the Oyster, if I hold the camera nice and level, that there's actually a really nice curve on the walkway. And as you go along, we'll see it when we get to the tracks just forward. There's a drain along there, and you have a really nice high tow rail. So it's nice and safe. Both at starboard and port, you have access to pontoons and so on, and a really nice boarding ladder either side. And here you go, your Lumar tracks outboard. There's one of those drains there. Uh -huh. It's quite an extensive sail plan with these boats. Inboard tracks, so if you have a 108% jib or something like that. This is where your shrouds will be. So outboard shrouds and then flush hatches all the way through on the foredeck. And if you haven't seen this before, these little stainless steel clips are actually for putting a Gerard on so that you can have ventilation in here um, when you're underway or at anchor and, you know, keep air circulating through. We're going to start up here at the bow. 
You have a huge integral double barrel steel roller. As you can see, anchor one side. It's nicely set up like this, so at least you can attach directly to a mooring ball on the left there. All the way forward, you have an attachment for Jenica, Code D, Spinnaker, you know, whatever your sail plan is, and it is wide enough. I'm going to do it in the boat show because if I fall off, break my neck and die, and there's enough room to be able to walk forward. You have a Lumar anchor windlass directly below that. There's a very, very large anchor chain, uh, anchor locker, chain locker. And then just over here, not that it's connected, that you have, you know, so you can have a fresh water flush, clean off your, your chain and so on as it comes up. So very handy. And then just behind that, it is a very large watertight locker. So here forward, you have a watertight bulkhead. And there is another watertight bulkhead just here going aft. So nice and strong. There is access underneath there for more storage if you need it. As you can see, these guys have set up their mooring lines in here and a couple of fenders just to give you an idea of space. And there's plenty of room for keeping some of those sails. And a nice big locker. There's something you'll notice going around these bigger boats, especially the quality boats, and that's how well and strong the hatches, especially the forward hatches or in watertight areas, just how well constructed they are. Electric feet control for your windlass. And then I want to give you a look all the way aft. I'd like you to see if you can how nicely curved the deck is, but also, you know, there's nothing sticking up. It's very, very nice. Nothing to drip over. <clears throat> now I'm going to make my way to the cockpit quickly. There are two huge forward opening windows, and we'll see those when we go down into the saloon. And something else I'd like to put out, actually forward on top of the coach roof here is a non-slip surface. Let's get up there for whatever reason. I'm not going to fall on your backside. I'm going to start on the port helm. Both helms, these seats are huge, so there's room for two. They've put a really nice back on the seat for lumbar support, so it's a lot more comfortable. And then you have a footwell by each helm that's angled just to make it more comfortable. I'll give you a view forward from my spot at the helm. There's always a, a discussion when I'm talking with my friends, you know, is it a centre cockpit, is it an aft cockpit? I think it's really, it's a bit of a hybrid of them, of them both. Because a lot of the time, once you've got your sail set and your autopilot's on, you can spend the majority of your time in the cockpit area, which is here, and actually sunken down, sort of gives you a lot more protection. But here at the helm, sat at the helm, you can see all the way forward you know, unobstructed visibility. And it's easy for me to say in an indoor show, but you know, you can see aft too. Okay, port helm, you have your Volvo Penta start stop, revs, engine counter, hours, all that sort of stuff. Touch button, when you're in a yacht this size, it's, well, it's normal standard really in haul out haul as you can see main sail head sail self-explanatory compass and a bng zeus chart plotter bow and stern thrusters and your autopilot and just here by the helm by the side of the helm you actually have your throttle controls i should imagine if you asked oyster and you wanted it on both helms the same with the um, bow and stern thrusters. I'm sure it's not an issue. And something I like about the pedestals, so you'll see this on the starboard one too. We're not gonna open it up, but you have two clips either side. So you can actually lift this panel up and troubleshoot if you have to. 
<clears throat> without having to trace wires back and unscrew things and it's all for ease of use and then over on the starboard helm and there is a larger bng 15 inch zeus chart plotter fusion stereo compass once again repeated on this side you have your in haul out haul for your head sail main sail and so on self-explanatory we've seen this with a few other boats and i want to point it out okay i think there's a something they're doing now which i think is brilliant whether they market it this way is another issue but i think you actually have three zones so you have your entertainment area cockpit zone it's your area where you're relaxing you're eating you're drinking you can be a part of the action with what's you know see what's going on without actually being involved in the action and then you have your helms so zone two and then aft you have that huge real estate area at the aft cockpit so one two three or vice versa it's entirely up to you it's just nice because you can you know be involved as much as you want or not um, and just enjoy your time in the cockpit either side there's enough seating for six to eight people comfortably you're well protected so there's no spray hood up but you know the the backrests of the seats are really really high very very comfortable and then if you imagine behind me you would have the spray hood up you'd <laughs> morning. morning you'd have the spray hood up i would be well protected here very very comfortable and out of the weather so you know in the cockpit table you have a really nice fridge and cool box. Today for us is a quite, uh, it's a quiet day, so we can come running. Hand holds forward, aft, and then see if we can find an image for you. So the leaves of the table fold out, and then you have one aft here for dining for eight to ten. Thank you. Under the two, so your walkway through, under the two seats in the cockpit. I'm not going to open them both, but you have a really good storage area. Your washboards are on gas struts, so they come up nicely. And then on the starboard side, some proper sized mug holders. And as you can see, because we all like a cup of tea, we're all British. Um, USB charging forward. There's your spray hood. Cup holders once again repeated on the port side and then before we go down the companionway you have your B&G repeaters which you can figure how you wish. Okay quick change of camera because you guys wanted a wider view than last time. So I have some pretty steep steps coming in but that's for a reason and that will be evident as soon as I come back, I'm going to step down into the galley and give you the view of the saloon. With Oyster, they work with, or when they were designing these, they worked with an interior designer. I'll leave a link. Um, so there is an extensive choice of colours, materials and styling. Obviously wood, veneers too. You can pretty much style the boat you want. One of the things that Oyster have become famous for are these seascape windows. And then just standing in the saloon, you have these massive overhead windows in your up top here. And those are those two forward facing um, opening hatches right above my head. As you come down the companionway, if you need it, there is a handhold walking forward, both sides of the companionway. I'll show you that. You have uh, handholds coming forward and on the tables. What I'm gonna do is start on the starboard side. A proper, proper nav desk 
pilot station, home office, um, whatever you want to call whatever you want to call it. We went into it quite a bit on the 595 and I'll give you a good look over on this one. So you have sections for charts and bits and pieces, but they're logbook back. And then forward is your inbuilt PC screen, basically, as you can see. So you can get, as long as you have Starlink or something like that, have direct access to the internet. You can do your work, have your keyboard if you need it, whatever you're doing. Light switches, there is a red light for night watch and a USB charger. There's also one of the cigarette style charger things. And then over here, more charging points. There's so much um, Oyster have packed a lot in here. I think sometime what we'll try and arrange with them to do is either when we're back in the UK this year or at the Camboat show is to actually spend time going through the entire systems um, with you guys just on a standalone video on its own if you're interested. Your C-Zone um, digital control up there we've been through this and a big B&G Zeus um, chart plotter. There's your controls for your own and generator and VHF um, fusion stereo and obviously satellite you know I don't have to say it this is actually closed off on this show unlike can so you have your oyster main switch boards it's nice to see you know proper switches and we went through this a little bit so this is their system so you can go through and check your water batteries diesel um, fault finding you can set it up so that have your lights on on your mast or your anchor lights you can set it up so that it works with your mobile or on a timer that you know you go ashore and you come back and you want your lights to turn on at a particular time or the air conditioning and so on there's there's a lot to it it's one of the reasons why you pay the money you do for oyster and then just down here before we go you have a, another storage area for charts and other bits and pieces just behind me and behind the companionway on the starboard side, you have a workshop area, non-slip mats. We won't go through everything because there are other journalists actually waiting to get on. For once, it's me holding them up, not the other way around. So a huge drawer for tools. And then down here, there are cupboards for spare parts and other bits and pieces and a deep, um, you know, tool rack kit. And the elephant in the room, um, washer dryer. Didn't really need to point that out. And access, normally there'd be a soundproof door here, but for the show, they've put on a Perspex screen. There's your Volvo Penta engine. Raycall um, fuel filter for, there's two of them. I don't know if I can get them both on camera. So as you can see, you've got two filters there. Your generator is just down below there. There is access from the other side in the galley, in the cupboards, and then your drive shaft and everything else. It's all, it's all here. Hopefully we can get to the Oyster Yard while we're in the UK, we're going to Spirit and Contessa and so on. I think it'd be really interesting to have a look. And then forward, I'll give you a quick pano from this way around. Before we go forward, try not to get too bored, guys, but I just would like to give you an idea of the actual space, volume and light of this boat as we go around. Yeah, we'll see if we can arrange a factory visit for you because it'd be interesting to see where the water tanks are and the diesel tanks, you know. Port side is a really nice bunk room. So somewhere for the kids, crew or guests. Grab handles as you go through. Obviously, these are blue water boats. And then just down, you have a small locker there's your heating and air convents. You have also underneath the bunk, there's a section for bits and pieces. 
and then you'll notice I'm not going to move the pillows on this one up here on the top bunk so they've taken them out but you have your eyelets up here and that one's still in over there by the fan so you can have lee cloths in here for sea berth there is an opening hatch and there are insect screens and privacy blinds on all the overhead hatches and then behind the door there's a very large vented um, hanging locker when you open all the cupboards you see that pretty standard with these um, more upmarket boats but all the lights come on all the i think by the smell of it, the um, drawer is actually lined in cedar. So, yeah, it is. How beautiful. So your linens and your clothes will always have that cedar smell. It's little touches like that that make boats like this. Well, it's, it's what you're paying the money for. And then just across on the starboard side, you have your guest or you know f heads for the kids so electric flush um, fresh water toilet plenty once again plenty of storage i'm not going to open all the cupboards especially as oyster have asked everybody not to some great storage under the sink and really nice corian worktop hot and cold fresh water there is an opening hatch forward and there's an opening hatch and you have ventilation and then grab handle once again and then you have a, a heated um, towel rail and a very nice a real glass door so i'm not going to mess around with them very nice walk-in shower there is a they've added a, a seat and an area for all your bottles and bits and pieces and obviously a thermostatic tap so set your temperature um, it's more economical for heating your water tanks and so on and then forward you have your vip or guest cabin it's a semi-island double berth or slightly larger than a double berth um, as you can see it is raised up Grab handles coming through. Underneath the bed, I'll open this side. Um, there's some very, very large drawers. So you have four drawers either side and then port side. There is more space. Something to check out on the veneers, and you'll see this all the way through the boats. Most of the time I don't point it out because it's just, I see it all the time. But you'll see how they've matched the grain of the veneers. So all the way along, all the, the veneer is matched. It helps stretch the, the boat. So you're paying a, a premium too because it's the, the workshops are doing a fabulous job. Because everything is seamlessly, then it just flows. So once again, this is owner's choice of, of materials and colors. They've been done very, very nicely with the dark woods. I like the fact that once again, you are held in both sides to the boat, depending on what hill you're at, if you're underway doing the Atlantic or the Pacific or something. And you'll see right in the middle there, excuse my finger pointing, but there is sections so you can add an eye for your lee cloths if you need it. And then these are those huge skylights we saw up on the deck with a forward opening hatch. So plenty of light, plenty of ventilation. It's just, you know, nice touch. I wouldn't mind being a guest on one of these. Just want to point something out with the saloon table. It pulls out and extends. So you actually have one, you've got grab handles going through, excuse the angle two you can see a center join so this pulls out and you have a third leaf and there is an option to actually have this to drop down so you can have a really large stay bed which would be fabulous when you're at anchor somewhere in the bahamas or you know even in iceland well, the boat's warm enough and it can cope can cope with it 
So you have one step down into this galley. I'll give you a pano of the galley. Porium worktop. You can see curved fiddles. It's really, really nice. There are no sharp corners. You're not having to worry about smashing your hip. And there you go. Um, overhead bin, which I think is really good. It's very easy for cleaning your messes up when you're cooking. And for emptying it, it just comes out. It's good use of a corner where, you know, mostly it's wasted. So inboard, you have stainless steel, dual sinks, hot and cold water, salt water, and a switch over if you have a water maker so you can use your you know, use it as a test your water. Knife block, which is sensible. All boats should come with one for standard. And then slidey cupboards. Uh, you all know I like slidey cupboards. I think they're a lot more practical in a galley, in a boat. And once again, you have these um, captive posts. So all your plates and crockery and so on doesn't go um, flying all over the place just makes sense you know simple solutions to make your life easy nice mug rack and an opening hatch up here so you can pass the skipper a cup of tea I'll obviously vent the galley right outboard you have an induction four hob gimbal stove with oven I'm not going to open all the cupboards. I would say there are other people waiting to get around. And the show is very, very busy this year. And there is a lot more journalists and videographers than normal. See how long that drawer is. They're using every available bit of space. And then have sliders this side. And you can see the cupboards are just another one of those details. The cupboards are vented, condensation, odours. Um, 10 o'clock, I'm going to have my first person to see you. And as you can see, if you want, I can later. Or later then. Whenever you want. Okay. Opening hatch when you're cooking under anchor, and this one is actually fitted with a cooker hood overhead. Excuse the voices in the background. We're going to be quick. We're nearly done. And then once again, more overhead cupboards. And this one's fitted with a really nice oven, microwave oven. And there's always an and, always and, and, and. A very voluminous dishwasher. It's happening more and more on boats. I think it's a great idea. As long as they're working and it has a little sea lock on it to stop it opening accidentally underway which is a brilliant idea i'm not going to open the fridge and freezer because obviously as you can see oyster have asked us not to but you can have fridge fridge or fridge freezer configure it how you want and just above my head you can see the temperature controls right the thing you've all been waiting for is the owner's suite the aft cabin you have a full-size Queen Island bed. There are options, I think. Well, I'll have a look, see if we can find a picture. I think there's an option if you want. You can have a, um, you know, like a small chaise long there and a vanity and so on. But I will look. I know I've already said it on the video, but, you know, if an image comes up, you know I looked. And then... So port side, you have those famous oyster seascape windows. It's just stunning. Absolutely stunning. The lighting, the way, I know everybody wants light woods now, but I will say the way this has been done with the darker woods, the materials and so on, it's actually a really relaxing, warm space to be in. And... I know it's a larger boat before you all put something in the comments below, but it feels bigger than it is. It feels like a 60 footer. Um, I'm not going to open all the covers, but this is by the door. So once again, venture covers and lined in cedar, you know, so you'll 
clothes, your linens are going to come out smelling nice and fresh. I'm going to have those dank, boaty smells. Well done, oyster. Television. So, you know, you have your entertaining. There are controls, plugs, USB charging, light switches, and all over there are controls for your air conditioning and heating. And then coming forward, like I said, I'm not going to open everything. Um, they've actually got customers waiting to come on. So. And then the owner's ensuite. So you have an electric freshwater flush. It's pretty much a standard on these boats. Plenty of storage, hot and cold water. I actually really like the style of their taps on this boat. It's, you know. Opening port light. Um, there is storage down there for bottles, which I think is really, really clever. And then just to my left here, it is a really nice separate shower. I know that was quite quick. Um, hopefully we'll have an opportunity to either have a look around another oyster at the Cannes Yachting Festival this September. Or like I say, once we're in the UK, I'm going to send them an email and see if we can get a factory tour or something like that in it. If I've missed anything, you know the drill, let me know in the comments below. If you like this boat, give it a thumbs up. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you on the next one. I'm gonna do the cockpit and then <clears throat> before we do the inside, um, I, think, I think the Italians are here again. Keep bumping into this lock there. I didn't say that, so we'll edit it out. Fine bunch of gentlemen. Um, <laughs> Every day.